Sigmund Freud had a protege, Carl Jung, who recognized in the way events happen to us that are coincidental, that sort of transcends the typical cause and effect. We live our life as if it is nothing but cause and effect. A series of causes will bring about a certain effect. You likely feel as if you are simply receptive to a boatload of causes that then cause you to have to act in a certain way, and that's their effect. It feels like you don't have very much power. It must feel as if you are not in control. What Jung explored are those moments where things happen that seem to not have any rational cause. And we can further categorize that as tragedies, or we can further categorize that as coincidence. I think those are the two terms we typically use. Jung went further and studied this pretty extensively. And sees that there's this certain kind of, what he called, simulanity. Sorry, he was German and he was smart. I'm neither. Therefore, it cannot be a question of cause and effect, but of falling together in time. Because of this quality of simulanity, I have picked on the term synchronicity to designate a hypothetical factor equal in rank to casuality as a principle of explanation. I have meant that things fall together in time. Synchronicity. Synchronos. Synchronos. As something that is as likely as an explanation for disaster or random coincidence. The things that don't seem to have had a cause. When he studied this enough, he came to see that these coincidences happen often. That they are inexplainable through randomness and that they have usually a meaning if we as meaning making creatures attribute to them a meaning. You look for them they're going to be there because you're implanting a meaning on a lot of things. What he was most interested in and what I was most interested in when I uh, had my first of what could be an unexplainable, I mean my first synchronistic experience, what I would say were those things that you did not, could not, would not, have not, impossible to have had a reason for it to happen, a meaning for it to have happened. The only meaning that you can put to it is the sensation of a, of life being a lucid dream. So I'm in Iraq trying to figure out what's this all about. I figured Karen Armstrong's The Battle for God, A History of Fundamentalism would probably be a good start. I'm riding along to we were south of the danger zone. And she's explaining the difference between Shia and Sunni Islam and what basically happened, an argument between the individual that was sort of the political heir of Muhammad after he died and the biological heir, Ali ibn Ali Talib, uh, cousin-in-law, who was invited to Iraq to make a peace under the guise of making a peace. Him and his small band outside of Karbala were killed on the plains. And so the sacred sites of Najaf and Karbala, which are close to each other, became this place that was dedicated respectively to Imam Ali and Imam Hussein, a follow-on Imam, important to Shia in an area that is controlled by Sunni. So I'm sitting there in Iraq driving around, you know, and I remember I was with Harry Siebenhaler at the time, who was my typical co-driver. See, wait, hold on, where, where are we, man? Where, where are we? And like, I don't I don't know. Um, and we look on the road sign and we're in Najaf and we're going to Karbala. And I was just reading about the history of these two towns through a book that I seemingly randomly picked out because I was curious. The day that I am reading about it, the day that I am reading names that I've never even heard of, I'm driving through those towns. That's synchronicity. Another great example. For any of you who... Um, I have seen The Outpost or read the book. The middle co company commander, Yeskus, was actually a acquaintance of mine. My mother and his mother knew each other. His sisters used to beat me up as a child whenever they were being babysat by my mother. He probably only played war maybe once or twice as kids, but he joined the Nebraska National Guard and then went active duty. So, childhood friend of mine. I'm back from my tour in Iraq on leave for my sister's graduation show up in my 
class A uniform and had like one ribbon and a marksmanship badge, but you know, it's gotta impress, right? In a town of 900 people, everybody knows who you are, where you are, where you were, who you're related to, who you've been related to. Just how it is. It's the town that Jesus grew up in, quite frankly. Nazareth, Israel was the same way. It was a population they estimate of about 300 people at the time of, you know, 2,000 years ago. This gentleman's cousin was a grade below him. He and his family are visiting and he says, Hey, hey, Jason, you might see Rob. You, you might see Rob. And I was like, yeah, Carson, sure. There's 250,000 of us and we're all wearing the same uniform and we're spread out across two countries. But yeah, I, I might see Rob. And he was excited because, you know, he's like, Rob's over there. Rob's deployed. You're deployed at the same time. Isn't that cool? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. So I was in the dining hall um, just south of Baghdad. I think it was Camp Victory. Oh, and I'd been working out as you can tell, I can't even lift this arm. Waiting until it was like peak hot. So it was probably like 120 Fahrenheit. And decided to run to the gym a mile, mile and a half. Close and I realized I really should have probably grabbed some water. Work out, get done, need a shower. Barely make it to the chow window. And um, they had stir fry. And I hadn't had stir fry for ever. I hadn't had stir fry um, since Chinese food back in my civilian life before I deployed, right? So, ah, oh, I was excited. So I get over there in the stir fry line and, you know, thinking I'm a badass warrior, right? Because I'm, I'm a truck driver in Iraq. I get to drive around. Everybody else knows that I drive around. I don't want to get blown up. And a lot of people, they just really respect me for that. You know, I go, you know, I can, I just got done working out. I was massive, you know, when I walk up. So I want to give this officer, who's probably a pogue person other than grunt, he probably stays on the base all the time eating stir fry, and I want to give him a hard time, and they're like, hey sir, how often do you guys get served stir fry? Because I haven't seen it on any other base in Iraq, and sir looks kind of familiar. And it's Rob. No shit. I, I try to give him a hard time, the officer. And I catch his face. And I had to double check the name tape. And with a name like Yeskis, you don't see that too often. And so I... Rob? And he just, you know, it's about as confused as I am. Jason Willits from Osceola. And about that time, he about dropped his plate. If his cousin hadn't brought it to my attention and said two weeks prior, I honestly think it was, hey, you might run into Rob, I would have overlooked Rob. I might not have manifest Rob. The synchronicity that Carl Jung talks about is like that level, <laughs> okay? Often. When we discuss quantum physics, stick around a little longer, we can, we can talk a little bit more about that. But for now, speaking of quantum physics, I'm reading. Go figure. And I've been working out all day, and I'm reading uh, Brian Greene's uh, Fabric of the Cosmos, which is a great primer. I hate math. I suck at math. I cannot. I've never been able to see a mathematical equation as anything but a bunch of weird figures. Okay? I understand the logic. I understand how it's supposed to work. I took two or three years of calculus, pre-calc, and a couple years of calculus, something like that in high school, you know? Cool. No. But Brian Greene's Fabric of the Cosmos read that thing, and I was like, wow, I understand quantum mechanics. I understand what the latest experiments in the universe tell us about the fabric of the cosmos. I think it's where he got the title. I don't know. I'm just guessing on that one. Just taking a wild one here. So I'm reading that, sitting outside of Scania, which is kind of the two-thirds of the way north point. It was like it was like north of Scania was the danger zone, right? So I knew that I'd, 
had to read whatever I needed to read, and then, you know, I'd be driving for the next couple days until we got back south, however long that took. And I'm almost finished. And again, I'm sun tanning, getting my tan on, section. Oh, that is out there. Turn to the page that gets into string theory, and all the pages just all over the desert floor. Because the, the glue had actually melted. Well, I guess I'm not learning about string theory yet. And, and now I'm very glad. I don't know that we need string theory. A lot of the work that Amit Gotswami has done for years is finally being followed up on by a non-Indian dude. And he's, you know, Time Magazine top 100 influential individuals out there. He's a medical doctor. 